Jazz, the podcast about nothing. Um, I am joined by Found Materials aficionado, Chris. Yes. Chris. Yeah, that good, huh? Yeah. Um, well, we might have to move it once this is well timed. It's well timed. Yeah. Well, Chris is on the internet. You can find him at our show notes. Uh, Allison is a data injection specialist. Uh, and we are thrilled to have her because Allison um, brings brings our topics. Uh, ah, that's the data that is being injected. Okay, I got it. Yeah, that's the data injection. I mean, at this point, we're just a shell of a show. Correct? No? With no, with no, with no data injected into the show. Right. No. <laughs> just, doing, just going wherever the wind may blow us. Literally. <laughs> right on. So let's, let's do a show. And this works um, uh, poorly today. <laughs> um, this works as it always does. If you're uh, if you're new to the show, we uh, Chris and I do not know what the topic is. Allison does. In a short time, she'll share it with us, and we will discuss it um, or not uh, for the remainder of the show. Followed by. Um, several hard-hitting, fascinating questions. Yeah, I should see if we have any new ones uh, submitted by listeners, actually. Uh, but continue while I, while yeah. I do that. Well, so our topic today is... General. Unmute. Our topic today is <laughs> uh, the Suzuki method. Oh, Suzuki Which, method. That might, sounds like you actually know what that is. There might be a chance. I There's an overlap in an area that you both might dabble in. So I was like, maybe, but maybe so not. I think I do know what this is, but before I answer it with what I think it is, I will answer it what I answer with what I wish it was. Okay. Um, so Suzuki famously um, makes um, vehicles, right? Motorcycles. Mm -hmm. um, and also they had an automotive branch in the U.S. for quite a while. Um, I don't know why Suzuki is no longer, a, uh, no longer selling vehicles in the U.S. I like to think that that is the Suzuki method, is that they came in, they made their money, they had a number they were going to get to, and said, yep, we're done. This market's not for us <laughs> anymore, and walked away. So the exact opposite of like what um, a corporate mandate would be for a large organization like that. Like I'm going to, again. I'm going to take your uh, definition of the Suzuki method and I'm going to apply it to soccer because that's mm -hmm. what I do with life. Uh, so major league soccer recently, uh, the Los Angeles galaxy recently acquired an international superstar, which is a thing that the Los Angeles galaxy often do. Uh, is Latan Ibrahimovic, who's a Swedish footballer, and he's like 36 or something. Uh, but and there's a huge run-up to him uh, entering Major League Soccer because he's been, you know, a superstar for a number of years. He's been one of the top players in the world, um, and and because the the Galaxy have sort of made a habit of getting these these top name players, but sort of towards the end of their career, they did it with Beckham, they did it with uh, Steven Gerrard. No. They didn't do Steven Gerrard. Did they? Do, they didn't do Steven Gerrard. They did. Um, they had Landon Donovan. Um, so they had top footballers. Uh, so, and because uh, the Galaxies, one of the Galaxies' uh, early homegrown signings, uh, or for homegrown signings from a few years ago, was Jazzy Zardes. And when Jazzy Zardes was was picked, selected in the draft as the first round draft pick, he said they asked him what he's going to bring to the Galaxy or what Galaxy fans could expect. And they're gonna, he said, they're going to be amazed by him. They're going to be uh, shocked by my amazing skill 
or something stupid like that. So, so Zlatan Ibrahimovic in, in the run up to entering MLS uh, was being interviewed and uh, he was uh, asked the question, what do you want your legacy to be on major, in Major League Soccer? And he says, I came, I conquered, I left. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. He he wants to come, kick some ass, and then take off, just like the Suzuki method. So there you go. Ah, it's the huh. exact opposite of what most people would plan would, for the business. Yes, model. exactly. Yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> fuck all you. I'm just gonna be here right. and and score some goals, and then I'm gonna take off. Like I'm not here for the long term. <laughs> this is this is not forever domination. This is a season. Um. And now I will tell you what I think I know the Suzuki method to be, because I think that I was exposed to it. I think the college I went to, the Suzuki method is a way of training students in music. And I think that the approach is with stringed instruments. And I think that I don't know any more than that, but I feel like I probably should because I saw signs a lot about it. I apparently didn't read them. Maybe I didn't see signs. No, I did see signs. I thought you meant like, like Suzuki- omens. Like <laughs> Portents. <laughs> <laughs> actual signs <laughs> i do see a lot of those but not often about the suzuki method <laughs> i don't know what came, you just like conquered weird violin symbolism <laughs> <laughs> appearing <laughs> like a raven flew yes. overhead in the shape of a violin <laughs> it was actually a, a flock of geese and instead of like a v they were violin shaped <laughs> um sitting, your house is in the shape of a stringed instrument and that's just oh that was a missed opportunity wasn't it <laughs> I have um I have brought the uh, ukulele up here a couple times with Tyler. And, uh, That's nice. Yeah. So like yeah, nature cool. and peaceful. Uh, yeah, as long as the trash truck's not out. <laughs> <laughs> um, so so I I think that the Suzuki method also probably I feel like it has something to do with the way that you learn the standard scale and that it's not note based. I mean it's note based obviously it's music, but it's not like. A through G that it's do re mi, but I might be convoluting that with another method in my head. So apparently, I don't know. Is this the point where I confirm or deny your suspicion? No, no, I like the struggling portion since I I I was so confident. Like I do know what this is. No, I clearly have no idea what this is. Um, I should ramble on about it some more. Chris, do you know anything about Suzuki? Suzuki Um, applies to music. Who are musicians I mean, that have applied this applying, to music? Applying, applying that term to music seems to make sense. Uh, but beyond that, I know nothing, uh, Jon Snow. Um, uh, yeah, I would like my, my knee jerk uh, assumption is Suzuki Method has something to do with manufacturing uh, because of Suzuki automobiles. But uh, I think that probably the I th- I think that we've probably <laughs> killed that topic to death. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> it's because there's one thing that 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 thing is, and it's not. It's never that thing that we that we are thinking that it is. I feel like I probably read a Wikipedia article about this at some point in my life, and I feel like the Suzuki name is not related to the Suzuki Corporation, but. That might also be something I made up and not actually true. Yeah. It'd be kind of cool if it was associated with the Suzuki Corporation, well known for their uh, market entrance and exits. <laughs> uh, just, I really love the idea of like, I'm here, I'm going to eat everything at this buffet, and then I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of want that to be the Zlatan method as opposed to the Suzuki method, though. <laughs> I. Yeah, I feel like I would like to um, to try and like uh, add that to my vocabulary, you know, and, and just see if somebody like is is actually familiar with this, or people just assume that the way I use it is actually what it is. So so okay, so so to finish that story about Zlatan Ibrahimovic, he he the big talk whatever, and like it's easy to like blow people off, and especially like especially players coming from from other countries coming to the MLS, and then they find out that MLS is actually more competitive or more difficult to play in than they expected, and then they don't do very well their first year. So the first the first game that of the season uh the galaxy are down uh three nothing um 
they're down three nothing. Um, it's like the 60, 70th minute or something, and they bring on Zlatan. And immediately they score a goal. He didn't score the goal. He made an attempt, but he did not score a goal. Uh, but then like two minutes later, he fires a shot from like, from like midfield, like 40 yards out, hits the top corner. So now it's 3-2. And then maybe 10 minutes later, uh, he, gets, he scores another goal. And then they end up winning 4-3. So, so then the announcer makes the obvious uh, comment, MLS, you've been Zlataned. And in yeah, there you go. There's your, there's your, because yeah, yeah, apparently now, did he it's not just immediately hype. after that. Because I feel like that's kind of the peak of it, right? Like I've conquered. Like I, <laughs> there's not a lot left at this point. Like I'm, I'm out, y'all. Like I told you what I was gonna do, and I over. did it. Peace. And so, and 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 I guess uh, it, it came out later. It came after the game, uh, before the game, when he was first meeting his his new teammates for the first time. He 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 asked them all. He went around the room. He said, "Do you believe in God?" Um, and and they're all like, yeah, sure. And and he's like, good. I'm glad you believe in me. <laughs> <laughs> what a... <laughs> so uh, so the Zlatan effect is far more. The Zlatan method is far more interesting than the Suzuki. Method. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a it's quite a bold take on the Suzuki method. I would yes. say it's, it's a hell of a fork. Also, like, I do think like when spoon. you when you become a verb, you you've peaked like. <laughs> right oh man yeah either like a good way or a bad way yeah it's, yeah it's oh. not always i guess for, Woo. Yeah, the locker room talk must be so fascinating it's <laughs> 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 like no casual banter <laughs> i wouldn't know <laughs> wow okay well huh um I'm Can glad we could take like it back what to the soccer. The official definition of this is I am too. For you, I am. For you, I, am. The I, official... like, I like hearing you talk about soccer. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I kind of also wanted the long game of that to be like that we're just assuming that this player, we're like, yeah, yeah, but it's just like a completely made up player. We're like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Totally, totally. No, you can you, you can totally painting. Google and find that goal. It's ridiculous. Like I I, I watched it. I because I saw it live. I was watching the game. I was like, no, there's no way. Oh my god. I'm, pr- so, I'm pretty sure my dad sent me a clip of it. That's the only reason I'm not questioning these stories. Yeah, no, it, it's ridiculous. I'm like, no, this seems right. <laughs> <laughs> so Chris, in, in your house, then like soccer is obviously a point in television. Like just um, Real Salt Lake, or are you like? watching divisional opponents or whatever they're called or i mean how does it how, uh, how, how much does it dictate your tv viewing we used to watch we used to watch um a lot of non-rsl games um now we don't so much we definitely watch um the rsl games um and we watch like now there's the royals uh, which is the women's soccer team um so we watch those um, and and we would like to. I would like to watch the. We have a USL team, which is the lower division, uh, the uh, Real Monarchs, um, and they actually have. I mean, they went to the the final last year, um, so they have a far better team than our our first team uh, currently, um, and I think they're still undefeated. So like, we would like to watch more of those, but we don't have don't actually because uh, there's just too damn much soccer. <laughs> It's a lot of yeah. soccer. So following three teams and just the three local teams is just a lot of soccer. So, the, but the but nice thing about soccer, though, go but ahead. definitely the 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 Real Salt Lake and and the Utah Royals um, are are required viewing. Much like I am a casual gamer, I am a casual soccer watcher. Um, so, like World Cup, I'll I'll catch some games. Um, and the thing I like about watching soccer, Sotchers. Sotchers is the. Sotchers. Oh, is that right? So as a as a soccer, I, um, I, uh, I I like that it, the games are so short. Like it's not like yes. watching football, you know, where there are twenty seven commercial breaks, and it's. I mean, I love I love watching. That games. that's the thing that I've always appreciated time. about 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 soccer is that you know going into it. If you're going to a game or you're watching it on TV, it's going to be two hours, period. You're, and, I mean, that, that's it. It's a 90-minute game. There's 15 minutes in between. There's, like, a little bit before, a little bit after. But, like, it, two hours and you're done. And, and you don't have to, like, plan your entire day around it. It's not like baseball yeah. where it could go on literally four days. Or <laughs> football where it's interspersed every two seconds with an advertisement. Um, 
And and so I've always right, appreciated that. Because they wear their about... advertisements as exactly. Jersey, so problem yeah. solved. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I was the last World Cup. I was um, traveling in Miami with a buddy from England. Uh, we were down there for a trade show, and I don't. I mean, it was you know, it was like qualifying, and England didn't make it out of the qualifying round. Um, but so it was like he's like, oh, we got to find a bar to stop at, and we found this like this cool pub, and we were the only folks in the entire place at like two thirty in the afternoon slamming beer and yelling at a big screen tv about so i really didn't know what i was yelling about i was just there for the good time man i enjoyed the hell out of it it's fantastic yeah no i'll watch um watch the national team games uh occasionally um not like die hard um i watch the women's national team occasionally uh when we can get it and then like sometimes i'll go over to um to uh Aaron's parents' place, and um, her dad will have it on uh, TV. So that, that's how I saw the the Zlatan goals. Is because he was watching the the LA game. It was the new LA team versus the Galaxy, and so um, he had that game on. And so I and and we came at, in about like the 60th minute, so right before Zlatan uh, took the field. So um, I got to see his entire first performance, and it was ridiculous. Um, so yeah, so and so you know, if it's on, I'll, I'll definitely watch it. And, and like, if we go into like a a Mexican restaurant and they're playing uh soccer on tv I'll, I'll definitely be poking my head over there um there's the there's a a nor uh, an america's cup basically um so the the north and middle uh, north central and south america region is called Concacaf. i don't know what it stands for um probably something in spanish um so that that region is called Concacaf, and uh that applies to both club uh club leagues uh, so mls and um all of the various South and Central American leagues, um, as well as international. So there's a CONCACAF region for, for international uh, that like you need to you know, fight to go to the World Cup. And so there's a CONCACAF Champions League, CCL, uh, which is currently playing right now, um, not right this second, obviously. Uh, and um, that is basically all of the best teams from all of the leagues through whatever qualifying mechanisms there may be. There's like, I don't know, maybe four uh, for uh, MLS um, teams. And then, you know, so however you get there, it's all the best teams and there's a tournament and then whoever wins that tournament gets invited to a world, a FIFA world club championship uh, cup, um, which is like basically all the best teams in the world, um, which is, a really f sort of fascinating idea because it's it's the same idea as in you know the World Cup except it's not your international team it's your club team, um, which is a really cool thing. So anyway, that's a, that's a thing, and I pay attention to that. Um, right, MLS has never won the CCL ever uh, in their twenty year existence, and um, but the last couple of years they've sent a team to the final, so so that's cool. Usually it's a Mexican team. This year it's Chivas de Guadalajara. And Toronto. Finally, our team. Yeah, your, your team is it. your team is arguably the best in in MLS right now. Of course, they lost the first leg. Yeah, well, that's Toronto's big thing is like losing really great and then losing right out of the gate. <laughs> well, I was actually I was actually surprised because I I, I saw and I didn't see the like I saw the, like highlights time I've seen parts of the previous game that Chivas de Guadalajara played before, uh, in the semifinals. And I was actually surprised, <laughs> just taking over this game, talking about soccer. Uh, I was actually surprised uh, because the over the two-leg series, I think the first leg of the series, they just tied nothing, is nil-nil. And then the second leg, Chivas scored in like the 80th minute or something, and that was it. So like they completely shut down, I think it was the Sounders that they were playing. Uh, they just completely shut down the, uh, the other team they were playing uh, defensively and just bunkered for the entire the entire series and then scored a goal at the end. And I was like, they're totally going to do that with, with Toronto. They're, there's going to be no score in the first game and the second game, they're going to win one, nothing. And they're going to take the CCL that way. Yeah. Um, I hate to be Debbie Downer, but uh, Allison, can you tell us what Suzuki method is? <laughs> I can, but before I do, I want to say something about soccer. Excellent. Then, okay. <laughs> if, um, you're ever in the mood to travel, Toronto is a great place to watch the World Cup when it's happening wherever it's happening because you can basically travel to any neighborhood and be cheering for a team, which is really <laughs> great. Um, that is, that's the, 
Yeah, that's the most fun in the World Cup, in my opinion. Right? Is is like I I'm a I'm a what 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 was the casual soccer viewer? Soccer. Um, you're a soccer. <laughs> yes, casual soccer or just a soccer. Yeah, yes, that is the most fun for me. Is is joining with someone who is cheering on their, their home. Yeah, so it's like if you go to Little Italy, it's like, it's, like it's just it's fabulous because chances are you're, it's just fun and people put flags all over their car. It's really like, just the whole city kind of just gets really into it, which is bizarre for me because people weren't that into soccer when I was growing up. So well, I'm really interested in this. The so right now uh, there's a bid, a joint bid uh, between uh, the United States, Mexico, and Canada to host the twenty twenty. Uh, eight, yeah, I think uh, World Cup. I don't know. I, I, well, it might, it might be because there, the this year is in in Russia. That's twenty eighteen, so four years. It's not the next one because that one's in twenty twenty two. Yeah, and that one is in. Um, oh, I can't remember. Uh, really scary, uh, Qatar. Um, <laughs> really scary, and then followed by Qatar. Yeah. So and then so yeah, twenty twenty six is the, is the bid. Um, and I'm really excited about that because that would actually mean that that we could go to some World Cup games. Um, so was and, it '94 the last time it was in um, in the states? Yeah, yeah, that sounds right. That sounds right. Anyway, back to <laughs> the Suzuki method. Back to the Suzuki method, <laughs> which I really wish had something to do with soccer at this point. Just <laughs> <laughs> red herring. Um, but yeah, Gary, you're right. It has everything to do with music and learning music and stringed instruments in particular. Um, so it's a teaching system developed by uh, someone named Shinichi Suzuki. Um, and it is, has several, I guess, like tenants, but it's just basically that children look, listen, and imitate for music, similar to like learning language from their parents rather than um, necessarily like learning how to read music and, and all that. So it's like starting your children super young, or I don't know, I consider it super young, like two years old. Um, and to get to the next step, they have to complete the previous step, no matter how long it takes. So it's kind of like no, no child left behind and also parents are really involved as well versus like like a private lesson in a, in a regular method like the parent wouldn't be around but in these lessons the parent is like an integral part of part of that process oh that's neat yeah yeah that's how i, I learned walked, how to i walked music. by some place that was offering it and i was like what's that mean <laughs> <laughs> That's, um, that's, you, that, that's how I learned music. Yeah. Look, so listen, and do? look, listen, and try. I don't know. What was that? Yeah. Imitate? Yeah, there you go. Imitate. Elsie, did you do, did you do much research beyond? Um, um, what, I did, other it? than like, so the guy who it's founded off of, um, or that founded it, rather, <clears throat> apparently there was like some controversy a few years ago because he basically he gave himself a backstory, let me say, <laughs> um, that was called into question. Because he was like, I was friends with Einstein. And like, this was like, kind of given. Oh. Somebody kind of called yeah. him out on it. And they have, they've since like shown that, I don't know, at some point Einstein wrote him a letter. I don't know. But beyond that controversy though, because I immediately was like, what's this? Like, how was he discredited? Um, and to be honest, I don't really know if, that really discredits his whole method of learning just because he said he was friends with Einstein. Um, maybe wasn't besties with him. I don't know. <laughs> um, it doesn't really like discredit his whole like learning process. But uh, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So, it, so you, it's, the requirement is to start them young or you can start at any age? It, preference is to start young. Preference is to start young. Um, for neurological development, but apparently also, I guess it's been adapted into teaching adults the same for depending on their, I guess, background in music. Um, because a lot of adults, which kind of makes sense to me, gravitate more towards it because it's a little less, uh, not less rigid, but it's, it 
I think it speaks to a certain kind of how you want to learn music, what you want to get out of it. Like if you're not, you're like, I'm not, if you don't harbor dreams of being like, I'm going to join an orchestra and be the first mm -hmm. violin, you just want to learn violin. Then like, I feel like it could be a really good environment to learn. Yeah. So, so that, that resonates with me because uh, I have been primarily self-taught on the keyboard, piano, whatever instrument. Uh, I, I, took, I, I took saxophone lessons in school uh, and I was in orchestra, I was in band. Um, so I learned how to play saxophone the way you're supposed to, but for piano and for, I mean, I was given a, I asked and begged and demanded that I get a keyboard uh, when I was a kid and eventually got it. Uh, and I taught myself how to play. And my dad got me some book that was like, you know, pop songs that had like, here are the chords that you play on the, the automatic chord thing. And here are the notes that are like the thing that the singer is singing. Um, so it's like, and it had the, it was cool though, because it had like, it was sheet music, but it had the letter of the note in the note. And so I could, you know, read it and also associate. Um, so that's how I sort of learned how to, you know, the keyboard and the layout and whatever. Um, and then when I was in, and so I've always been interested in electronic music. And I, I when I was in, at university, I, um, I studied electronic music and experimental music. And as I'm studying electronic music and experimental music, I'm like, well, you know, I probably should take piano lessons. I've never had piano lessons. I should probably take piano lessons. So I took piano lessons and um, I really didn't enjoy it <laughs> um, at all. Uh, and so after one semester of piano lessons, I dropped it, uh, because it was like, I mean, like, okay, the things that I know how to do, I know how to do the piano lessons aren't really helping me with the things that I, you know, would like thought I should know. And ultimately what I'm going to end up doing on, on, on the piano or the keyboard is probably like putting stuff into a sequencer and like, you know, making electronic arrangements anyway. So none of this stuff is really relevant to how I play music or perform music. So yeah, it doesn't matter. I, I feel like I have two music minds. So um, time for an interesting Gary fact. I, uh, I <laughs> went to uh, college on a French horn scholarship um, and was like a very regimented traditional musician. Um, uh, but then I also play a ton of uh, string instruments. Um, guitar and ukulele and mandolin and quattro and charango and probably something else I'm forgetting. Um, but I, when I approach like string instruments, like I couldn't tell you, it would take, it's great difficult for me to tell you like what the rhythm I'm strumming with my hand is. Like it's a very felt thing. And even to the point of like chord progressions, you know, like at this point, just know there's like a minor that pops in there and it's the fingers sort of do it and it kind of happens, but I can't, I can't tell you like why or how. Um, uh, yeah, so that like somehow along the way, like I started playing guitar and that was like a totally different musical experience mm -hmm. than, you know, singing or single, single note versus like multi-note instruments. I, I mean, I can't, you know, I, 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 I'm sure if I took the time to, and I wanted to learn, I could probably play piano, but it hasn't really been an interest. Yeah, I, 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 I taught, practice, you know. So, I, and I taught myself how to play bass, and the way that I taught myself how to play bass is by listening to uh, a lot of punk, um, <laughs> where the bass, the bass riffs are really, really basic, um, yeah. and then sort of evolving into something like less than punk, like or more than punk, I guess. Uh, so, like you know, Tool and like other like hard rock, where the bass riffs are a little bit more complicated. And, and The Cure, The Cure is great for learning bass. The Cure is fantastic for learning bass that, I mean, Simon so, Gallup. Um, I'm, I'm, pretty, um, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty opinionated on music too, or at least mu music, the purpose of music, I guess, I'm, I'm pretty opinionated on. So like, I love being involved with the kids' school and doing like different weird music stuff. We use these plastic tubes called boom whackers that are, each tube resonates at a different frequency. Yeah, that's, Google it, I swear I'm not making this up. <laughs> Um, they're color coded, right, for each letter on the staff, um, but they also resonate at different frequencies due to their length. Um, so we've done some stuff with those, and I, I, I wrote like a little JavaScript app so that I could play the MIDI keyboard along, and it would show like on a piano on a screen the equivalent of the note and the color that was being played in the boom whacker at the same time. Hmm. It was silly and ridiculous, and we didn't sound very good. But, um, but th that wasn't the point. Like the point was like music is fun, you know, or can be fun. Music is is an interesting way to access um, 
emotions and feelings. So that was kind of the point for the kids, and and that was great. And um, do they look like and like didgeridoos? No, that, they are. Just I, I imagine they look tubes, like so hollow tubes, like a, they're hollow pipe, tubes. Okay. PVC pipe. Yeah. So they do look like didgeridoos. <laughs> well, except that, except there's no de I mean, like, I don't know. I think didgeridoo, like, I think, like, a, like decorated, like, wooden, Chris like, abnormal. This looks like. Go get a didgeridoo. Because <laughs> that right, just but, makes sense. Yeah, but these are, like, these are plastic and very industrial looking, and there's no, like, decoration on them. I mean, it's like you can go to Home Depot and buy, like, different lengths of PVC. Um <laughs> I love everything that's happening right now. So it's a bit more like Blue Man Group industrial, like PVC pipe. Yeah, only it's thinner walled, so you don't have to bang it very hard. But yeah, I mean, and it, and it, you can buy them in standard octave, or you can get you know sharps and flats as needed. And um, yeah, they're fun. I, I uh, and they're I think they're fairly inexpensive. I don't recall, but I, I I feel like I need to get a set for the house now, so we can play. Uh, and I've seen them make appearances on, you know, like sometimes you see like the acapella groups doing like weird covers on YouTube. Um, I've definitely seen them utilize boom whackers. That, so that isn't a YouTube rabbit hole I have gone down recently, um, but sure. <laughs> check it out. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't seem to be as popular as it was, um, I don't know, eight months ago when I was spending lots of hours there. I don't know. Maybe it is and I've just moved on. <laughs> Well, we've definitely reached the time of the show with the countdown. Mm -hmm. Oh, so, so we have. Yikes. So anxiety is peaking. And, <laughs> and, we, and, we've, and we've barely scratched the surface of the Suzuki method as it truly stands. But I think well, and there's all these, uh, to be honest, and then I started delving in, there's all these other methods of basically how to rate the potential of children and like raise them up in a musical way, which there's all these different techniques. And I had no idea. Oh, man. But, so I don't know my, what this, technique is, is preferred for people, but it's nice that there are so many. <laughs> my son asked I don't me like the other techniques. day, like, who is the best, what do you ask me? Who is the best band ever? What did and you I'm say? like, well, that's, I said, that's an impossible question to answer. There is no answer. I said, like, there are best bands for certain moments and best songs at certain times in your life, but like ever? No, it's not universal. It's, it's individual. So what mm -hmm. you like what 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 speaks to you and what you like you in the moment, moment that you like it yeah right. yes yes that's the crazy thing about music i mean art in general obviously so uh one thing that i wanted to say and, and i'll say it very briefly since we're running out of time uh i went to see hamilton last weekend nice and yeah i, I had to miss the the inaugural home opener of the utah royals uh which i had tickets for to see hamilton because i had gotten the tickets for hamilton before the season was announced uh or the, the schedule um so we went to see and it was act literally at the same time anyway uh so we went to see see hamilton and uh speaking of of music and and it affecting you emotionally like the, the entire first act i felt like i was choked up like it was just a like I don't, I, and I don't even really understand why it just it just hit me and then the and then like probably 75 50 to 70 percent five percent of the second act I was literally in tears and I was just waiting for the end of the song for the audience to clap so I could sniffle <laughs> because I did not want to sniffle to interrupt oh. the, the song and there were people sniffling all around me but like to be sure like yeah. I was not the only person that was bawling at that point um, but uh, yeah, so, and yeah, I don't know what it, what it was specifically about the story or if, if, if it even had anything to do with the story, um, because I know that, uh, in many ways, like just the sounds, um, affect me, uh, on an emotional level. Uh, and that's one of the things that I, um, that makes me passionate about, about music and about making music is because I, it hits me so hard, um, that it's just, yeah. Uh, so we'll put off, I'll put off questions for another minute because I, the first time I listened to Hamilton, I, I kind of knew like the story going in, right? Like knew what the soul music was about. And then in the second act, there's that song. Um, uh, I guess it's not a spoiler at this point when his son dies, right? And he's mm -hmm. uh, unimaginable, right? And uh, and the first time I heard that song, like, uh, I mean, it totally, I was totally- Yeah, I was destroyed. Back. Like I was not, not ready or expecting that. Um, especially like where that falls like in the context of the rest of the musical it's mm -hmm. like 
I mean, it's, and 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 super effective in the context of his life, or at least as it's portrayed in the musical. Like, you know, that's a hell of a speed bump. Yep. Or whatever. I, it's, yeah. 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 So much respect for musicians that that are the ones that write the music, as well as the ones that create it, bring it alive. Music is a good topic. <laughs> so we have questions. <laughs> Oh, no, but now my questions have nothing to do with music. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Although I, no, I need to see Hamilton even more now. Um, yeah. Okay, so it's touring. I know. I think it's coming. I don't remember. I don't remember when it's coming to Toronto, but I have to hop on those tickets. <laughs> I have a whole. I have a whole thing about about how to get tickets because it was a it was a whole to do. But we can we can take that off the show. <laughs> That's for another episode. Um, okay, so what is your favorite thing to do when it's raining? Uh, unplug electronics. Yeah, because it's because in, in Florida, if it's raining, it's just probably lightning and thunder as well. So, okay. yeah. Um, <sighs> I'm not a go outside and play in the rain person. I'm a I'm a seasonal affective disorder. Go inside and and mope and be grumpy person. Uh, maybe the like, time of day maybe, maybe maybe yeah that's true uh maybe like i don't know watch a movie and get under some blankets or something you know like yeah, yeah game something really introverted yeah a game yeah blanket burrito yeah i hear you <laughs> okay now for the challenging portion name three <laughs> yeah name three ways you can cleanse crystals Uh, bleach, um, <laughs> sandpaper, and the third one I knew was going to a chainsaw. Um, I would imagine at least one of the ways is using like a rock tumbler. Um, Boiling. And there's probably some non-bleach chemical that could work, um, but I don't really know. You guys are going woo at all with this. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> well, well, I, I mean, the I chainsaw. That would be the answer. Yeah. yeah. Um, sunlight, sunlight. So you want me to go woo? Uh, cleaning crystals, um, summoning cleansing. the dark lord. Cleansing. Yeah, summoning the dark yeah. lord into the crystal uh, so that, uh, and asking his, asking his guidance uh, to uh, purge all of the uh, negative uh, energies from the crystal fire <laughs> brimstone yeah i hear yeah. you yes yeah yeah yep i only brought two questions you only brought two okay okay well then we need to go on about the crystal some more uh no i thought that was a serious question i thought like you had just done it uh because i know that you you do crystal I, stuff i may or may not have crystals in my yeah possession. so I, I thought i thought that i thought that perhaps that 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 this came out of like a mm, I'm gonna take this to the <laughs> like I'm cleaning my crystal. I thought it was like maybe like a thing you that can. you did, you know? <laughs> like, like it's it's that time of the month I need to clean my crystals. It's true. And I, by that time of the month I meant time of the month to clean the crystals, not something else. I yeah, I just I'm wanted to <laughs> make yeah. make that clear. There's a lunar cycle there, but it's yes. not a lunar cycle. Yeah, it's not that lunar cycle. It's a different lunar cycle. I went to a woo store, or what I would term a woo store, um, and a friend bought uh, a gem there, and the woman offered to cleanse it for her before we left, and I thought that uh -huh. was amazing. So, and what yeah, does that, that look like? Is that like, okay, hang on, let me get my, 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 okay, and then we just, and then we put our energies into it? No, it was much more, it was like a little tiny barbecue, and like a barbecue like and there was like a little smudging of like sage and herbs and she put it on the little barbecue okay um, it was amazing and it almost made me wish that i was buying gems as well so that they could go on this little barbecue so the, the gem was gems on the barbecue service. with the sage yeah so the sage is underneath and then the smoke comes up and and cleanses it and then so it wasn't like it wasn't like it wasn't like um burning the sage and then like putting the smoke on the gem it was like it's actually on the yeah the it's like on this little kind of grate resting above so then the smoke just rises and mm -hmm. takes care of it as she's ringing you through it's a very efficient process 
<laughs> we'll play That's Laguna her. Beach for you. <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay. I can, I can, I can go with that. Like smudging, but mm-hmm. on demand. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's, well, there, there needs to be, there obviously needs to be a service for that, right? Yeah. Well, I would, yeah. And in the, in the gig sorry. economy, right? Yeah. You roll well, out with your little barbecue and sage <laughs> on site. I mean, I mean, you could do a big barbecue too. <laughs> that's, that's the thing. You could like. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.